Hi everybody, welcome back to Project Spatial. I am Katie Scheuer and I am here to increase your spatial impact. Now so many of you have found me over the last year and I have been extremely grateful for all of the comments that you guys continue to leave for me and everything that you guys reach out with me. And I wanna make sure that you guys definitely hit subscribe on this video if you have not done so already because I'm going to be having a bunch more videos that are coming out and seeing how Project Spatial is going to grow over the next couple of years. What is a geographic information system in 2021? It is so different than it was when I got into the industry over 10 years ago. GIS has grown exponentially along with technology and data analysis. And though we have so many capabilities in analysis and so much data out there, there's still a strategic and different stages that a GIS will go through as it progresses. And I got news for you, not everybody has a full GIS system and not everybody needs one. So depending on where you're looking for in a career or what company you are, what your goals are, you might be at different stages of this or you might just be all in on analysis and not need anything else. So I wanted to review kind of what are the different stages a GIS goes through as it grows and develops into creating a spatial thinking organization. And if you're interested in more details on any of the stages that I cover today, make sure you check out the links below because I have a more detailed description of all of the different stages in a wonderful little guide that I put together for you and it's completely free. So when you're starting a GIS system and you're building your geographic information, you need to start with data collection. A lot of companies that started with CAD maps or they had paper maps or just paper records, um, they didn't really know what information they had available or it was all in unstructured formats. So the first thing you need to do is decide what are we going to take care of? What is going to become the system of record for our geographic information system? Within that, you can collect data in multiple different ways. You can obviously take any of your digitized files that you have through CAD or shape files, and you can also go through and figure out, do you have any paper maps or like digital PDF maps that you can then convert into spatial products. There's also a GPS data collection, which will allow you to get onto the field and collect information. And this is great if you're going to need high accuracy information of where all your assets are because you want to be able to measure out the line of a segment of pipe that is in the ground. Or you want to be able to figure out how much room do you have between certain trees in a park design. Um, you're going to need more accurate information and that's where GPS units really come in handy. Along with data collection that you're doing digitally through GPS units or just mobile applications that are going directly into your GIS system, you can use remote sensing and satellite data and other data that people have collected using drones to collect more digital imagery and that sort of thing. And all of this can get compiled and through AI, you can actually identify a lot of locations and points through imagery to be able to create all of your database that you need to structure. Once you get enough data that you feel comfortable with the structure and you've started building your schema out and you have things organized, you want to start moving on to stage two. Stage two is access. You want to give people access to your information even before you're really ready to create real products with it. Now, this is important because as a GIS professional, you're probably not the subject expert on your data. You are really good at building databases, you're really good at, good at organizing information, finding ways to collect information and maintain that, but you probably aren't the subject expert and you probably aren't the end user. So this is when you want to get your subject experts, your end users, start getting your champions of GIS, people that are actually going to use the information that you are storing and cataloging. You want to get their hands and eyes on this information because they're the ones that are going to be able to tell you that this is category is wrong or this attribute needs to change or I need to have these options because this is what's coming up in the future even though we didn't historically do it. 
um, they're the ones that can quality check all of your information. And without good, solid information in your GIS system, you got nothing. So if they can't rely on it, if they can't use it, if they can't get access to it, and you are not deploying this through multiple different users, why are you even doing it? Make sure that you're getting your subject users involved and getting access to them through maps or reports or integrated systems. However you can give them access to your information, you are going to have a better system overall. So stage three of your GIS system is integration. Now, once you have collected a fair amount of data and you have a nice geo database working for you, things are fairly organized and pretty clean. You have your subject matter like figured out because you have your key users using the information and they're confident with the information. You want to start integrating your GIS data and your processes into the rest of the company. This comes in the forms of being able to put together data workflows. So you want to map everything that your data touches and everybody that touches your data. So you want to go through and say, this is where my point starts. This is where my information starts. These are the people that need to have access to it to be able to start a project. As they work through their project, this is how the data needs to transform, and these are the tools that they need to be able to work through that project. At the end of the project, this is how the final data is modified and kept in the database so that way for the next person that needs it, they have access to it and it's archived in a usable manner. All of that workflow is going to happen over all of your different processes. And for many people, this can be extremely overwhelming and that's okay. Cause there's people to help you. There's people like me who like to help and consult with these sorts of things. There's also many other consultants out there and people that are probably subject matter experts for the data in your industry. So make sure you get somebody involved if this is kind of a little bit more than you thought you were gonna take on. The other portion of integration that a lot of people do hire experts for is getting your systems integrated. So typically a GIS system is not the only software system that you have in your company. A lot of times you have financial systems, customer information systems, live data feeds, all sorts of things that are helping to keep track and keep your business functioning. The more that you can integrate your GIS data with that information, whether that is a push-pull integration, whether that is a live integration where you actually use multi-speak to plug the systems together, however you end up doing it to fit your business needs, you're going to get your system data used by more people. It's going to become more reliable and therefore more useful. And the more use that you get out of your GIS system really is how you're going to bring your costs down. Now, I'm not going to lie, when you're setting up a GIS system, the cost up front can be kind of expensive. You're putting a lot of time and effort into creating data, manipulating data, cleaning data, collecting new information. But once you start getting into these integrations of workflows and you start integrating it into different systems, you really see the value of having all of this information organized and readily available. By the way, if you want to know what positions align with all of these different stages, because one is really speaking to you and you're like, hey, I really want to be able to do that, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell on this video because I'm going to be coming out with a series describing what position titles you want to be looking for and how much do they pay to fit into these different stages within a GIS system. Stage four is analysis. Now once you, once you have collected all of this information and you've started making it work for you and you're integrated into different systems so you have access to any information, you can throw it all together and see it in one place, you want to start figuring out what analysis can you use your data for. So if you have a chunk of money that's coming in because you've budgeted for a new item for your business, you want to make sure that, you know, if that's a new store, you're putting it in the correct location. Well, you should have a fair amount of information about where your customers are, what kind of stuff they like. And then you can also use things of like what else is in the area. Maybe your business aligns with another type of business. So you want to be located close to that. 
Um, maybe it's something that's super small and walkable and so you want to make sure you're next to a bunch of coffee shops and restaurants and on a street where you're going to be seen easily. You also might want to look at traffic data and weather data and all of that information to figure out where is the best place to put that store. That all falls under data analysis. And data analysis allows you to make better decisions for your business because of the information that you have invested into your GIS system. This ultimately leads to better financial decisions and better business decisions and letting the data truly drive where you're going. Stage five is strategy. And this is kind of odd saying that it's stage five because really you should be using strategy throughout this entire deployment of your GIS system because Really, without a strategy and without an end goal, you're gonna end up doing all sorts of things wrong. You're gonna have to repeat things. You're gonna have to move stuff. It just can be a mess. So make sure that you're using strategy at every single step of all these different stages. But once you have a system up and running and you have your system of record established, you have analysis established, you're integrating it into your business systems, you're making data-driven decisions, you might go, well, what's next? So what's next is really figuring out your strategy, figuring out how GIS is going to be the best tool for you to use. Where is the next thing in technology going? What are the next sensors out there? Can I automate things more? Can I use this data and information to push other things going on in the company? It comes down to making the system take care of all the little nitty gritty things that you might have been doing manually before and making sure that they're automated and working for you. Again, make sure you check the description down below. I have the guide for you down there that goes into more detail of all of these different stages so you can start building your spatial impact in your organization. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you guys soon. Bye.